an algorithm is uh, something that will always lead to the same result if it's used in the same way. So when we talk about the support system of the four mainstays as an algorithm, what we're really pointing to is that if you rely on the four mainstays, the, the trainer, the training, the community, and your own remembrance to just rest for short moments many times, then you'll, you, you're guaranteed to have access to a greater comprehensive order of intelligence, which we call open intelligence, and you're guaranteed to have life satisfaction and flourishing based on the access to this intelligence and allowing that intelligence to empower your potencies of mind, body, speech, qualities, and activities. And so the term is actually a very important term because it does exactly what it says it's going to do. And each one of us in our own circumstantial walk of life have the ability to have this direct experience. So whatever's going on for us moment to moment, whatever our circumstantial flow of data is, then that's the opportunity to go into you know, scientist mode and see that with whatever's coming up for us, if we choose rather than avoiding and replacing and indulging the data, but rather to clarify the data, in other words, to actually understand the reality and the ultimate meaning of that data, which when we rest for a short moment many times, we see that in that first short moment, like now, because we can do this whenever, whenever we remember, but if we just rest for a short moment, we recognize that there's this alertness that's always present. There's a cognizance, there's an intelligence at play, whether we're thinking or we're not thinking. And so many of us have a lot of experience with what it feels like to indulge or avoid or replace the data, but we don't really have a lot of experience with just allowing the data to just be as it is. And this is what a short moment allows us, and in a short moment of just resting, completely, mind and body, we, we just get to see in our own direct experience, well, what happens? So with whatever's going on right now, you know, the intellectual, mm, do I get what she's saying, or whatever's flowing for you, when we just relax, what, what really is happening in our moment-to-moment -moment experience? Well, whatever we've labeled the experience to be, or the emotion or the sensation. In a short moment, it, it, that, that, that definition, that reified definition, it's just outshone by the stable intelligence. That's what leaving, leaving it as it is really <laughs> means. Just leave the data to be as it is, and what happens? The data just flows into open intelligence comes from the open intelligence, excuse me. It arises from open intelligence, it flowers in open intelligence, and it resolves in open intelligence. And so we really get to see in our own experience that the open intelligence is what's empowering all of our thinking. It's what's empowering all of the sensations. It's empowering all the emotions. It's empowering everything that we say and do. <clears throat> and so this is, this is what we get used to when we rely on the mainstays. And it's not just the short moments. The short moments are great, and they, and they do provide us an access point to the open intelligence. But then how can we then best support ourselves in continuously seeing that we have constant access to this open intelligence. That's where the trainer comes in, that's where the training comes in, that's where the worldwide community comes in. So when we use all four of the mainstays as the, the ground and the support for how we want to live our life, then, then this is what happens. We see that open intelligence is more and more obvious to us every day, every moment. And the things that used to catch our attention, like all of the reified definitions to the thinking and the emotions and sensations, 
one, they don't catch our attention quite as much. They're not quite as intriguing as they once were. And since open intelligence is more and more obvious, then it's the open intelligence, the stability of that intelligence, the skillful nature of that intelligence, the wide openness of that intelligence, that becomes more and more intriguing to us, more and more obvious to us. And then rather than being emotionally reactive to our moment-to-moment -moment experience, we see well, we're actually much more stable than we thought we were. We're much more skillful than we thought we were. We, we actually do have a consistent, relaxed potency to our everyday experience. And we see that this is what becomes more and more apparent for us. And we don't really necessarily know how that happens. We can't explain it except that we know that, well, before we were not relying on this algorithm and now we are relying on this algorithm and these are the things that have changed. That's why it's so powerful to hear participants come up and share their direct experience. Because all we're doing is we are uh, proving that the algorithm really does work. And so it, it is um, a powerful way to live life. And, and a lot of people do have questions about, you know, the term as it is or leaving data unrejected or, or how that really looks and feels. And, and I, I, I would just say in your own direct experience, when you do not describe it, when you don't elaborate on it, when you're, when you're just allowing recognition and, a, and knowledge of the free-flowingness of the description to be as it is, then, then you see in your own experience that it's very different than avoiding it. When something comes up and, and we avoid it, first there's a little bit of energetic pushback that's, that's very obvious. And we see that the situation is neutralized but never really fully resolved. And, and so there is a very big difference. The, the, the avoiding and the indulging and the replacing never allow for the full flourishing of, of, the, of our open intelligence. It still restricts that intelligence to some sort of reified state. And neutralization always opens the door for, the, for the, the same afflictive state to arise in the same way. But when we rely on the four mainstays and we have more and more experience with allowing things to be as they are, the afflictive states, whatever they are, they, they never arise in the same, the same powerful way as when they're completely reified. So you see, you, you, because it's a gradual process, you will experience whatever it is you're going to experience circumstantially, but your relationship with that data will be very different. And you'll see that that relationship is uh, a relationship where the beneficial aspect of the of the reified definition, so to speak, is what becomes more apparent to you. And so, we're, you know, say, I don't know, ang anger is always a good, a good affliction to use. Everybody experiences anger. Everybody feels anger at one, at one time or another. And we've, we all know kind of how we once reacted to this, this word, uh, an emotional state, anger. But I would say that if you're being very truthful with yourself, the same emotional state can arise today, but you don't have the same reaction to it, and you don't uh, have the same charge to this label, anger. So you see right there, you've proven to yourself that um, there's an organic shift in the way you are with your circumstantial data. That's why it's so powerful to have these direct experiences. And, uh, and what will be guaranteed over time is that the beneficial aspect of the data, your beneficial response to no longer being so emotionally reactive or living in a, a state of contrivance, this will become more and more beneficial to you. That you're tapping into the, the, the stability of your own intelligence, the skillful nature of your own intelligence, rather than being distracted by the data and, and going off on, you know, some emotional reactive trip. <laughs> so you see, it, it's, it's more about seeing the benefits that have accrued since being introduced and seeing how your life has changed 
in a very natural and organic way rather than trying to kind of intellectualize your way through it. In terms like, you know, blowing open the data or letting the data be as it is, this is just a way of describing what happens when we're no longer so attached to the reified definitions and we see that these moment-to-moment -moment experiences have a much more open, vast, powerful nature to them than when it's like hiking up a mountain and you know there's all these crevices in the mountain side right and you can just go down those dark holes whenever you want to or you can just keep on keeping on to the top of the mountain mm -hmm. so you see that's the choice we have in every moment we either go down that dark hole of just uh, reifying everything and giving everything independent agency or we rest for a moment, we, we just relax for a moment, we go to, to the trainer or the training or the community and we see that while everything continues to stream and stream and stream, we have a choice as to what, what we're going to do and how we're going to be in relationship with all that's occurring for us circumstantially. So I, I just like to keep it simple like that. You know, just keep it simple and always bring it back to your own direct experience about how your life is flourishing in a way today than it was prior to meeting the training and know that the flourishing is what's going to continue forward forevermore. See now everybody's smiling because <laughs> everybody just stopped for a second and uh, thought about yeah that's actually what's happened to me. <laughs>